Hello, I'm Holly Lynn Lee, and I'm here today with Casey Maddox, and she is the director of high school mathematics at um, one of the regional centers in Georgia. And what is the name of that center? It's Northeast Georgia RESA. Okay. Uh, RESA is a regional education service agency. There are 16 of them around the state. Every school district in the state is a member of one. We, we are kind of the professional learning arm of the Georgia Department of Education. Oh, great. And our office is right outside of Athens where the University of Georgia is. Okay. All right. And so in that role, you work with a lot of high school teachers? Yes. I um, help with 21 high schools in the area, mm -hmm. though I'm not always in, each high, in every high school. I often offer courses or learning communities. Um, for those teachers so that I have more of a regional participation. But I also um, do coaching cycles in schools and so currently I'm in three school districts every month in their high schools doing coaching cycles with all their high school teachers. Oh, that is great. High school so, math teachers, yeah, sorry. Yeah, mm -hmm. so not only are you connecting with the teachers but you're in their classrooms mm -hmm. and you actually see what's, what's happening and you're able to provide that support in yes. the moment in the field. Absolutely. That's fantastic. Mm -hmm. So, you know, math teachers get the privilege of teaching all, sub, all areas in mathematics that include statistics. Yes. So what excites you about that possibility or that reality? <laughs> well, th there are several reasons that's pretty exciting. First of all, um, I think the statistics takes the theory that they're learning in mathematics in their algebra course uh, mm -hmm. in particular and in the geometry standards that they mm -hmm. have and really puts a realistic, real-life spin on them. We keep talking about using realistic examples um, mm -hmm. and using contextualized situations yeah. to make the mathematics come to life. Well, what better way to do that than the statistics? It gets a little messier with the statistics, but you need to know the pure math to make the um, statistics come to life then. And then you deal yeah. with the variability okay. and the inference. And um, I find that students are totally engaged mm -hmm. when we're doing statistics. Now, not if you're a doing it in the dry, old-fashioned, professorial type of way. Uh -huh. But if they're involved in the investigations, they're gathering their own data, um, they're giving meaning to that data, it, it just lends itself perfectly to that. Oh, and so it's very often students are totally engaged in the statistics part. So as you're working with teachers and they're learning some new ideas about the statistics, they're gaining their confidence, um, and they're learning to do the statistical investigations, what are the challenges that they face? Well, statistical thinking is different than mathematical thinking. Yeah, it and, is, it really um, is. And mathematics, I feel like, I, I mean, I, I did that for, uh, I've been doing that for 37 yeah. years yeah. now. I, I uh, am after an answer. And um, real often I'm real happy with just an answer. Mm -hmm. um, rather than even formulating a question, because we may not all be pursuing the same ideas when we look at statistics. Right, right. If you um, have a large data set, there could be lots of questions that could be asked of that data set. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and then this idea of once I have um, gathered my data and analyzed the data, there is another step of interpretation and proper interpretation. Mm -hmm. um, um, and so those um, uh, are some of the challenges that I know as a mathematics educator I faced as I began to teach statistics. Yeah. Um, I needed to learn how to go further and be um, more specific. One of the tools that we often use now um, is take the context and ask students, um, it comes from three act tasks, yeah. what do you notice, what do you wonder, um, to get them to, that's that low, low threshold, yeah. Yeah. get them to look closely at the task and oftentimes they'll wonder a lot of different really good ideas and I'm hearing teachers as they use those uh, describe those wonders that students have those questions that they mm -hmm. have um, the question of interest that the teacher has may not be among those but she's having to give uh, or he's having to give homage to all these other questions right. that could happen but we really want to focus on this. this yeah and so I find that that's very helpful for for teachers to use notice and wonder yeah um, to guide them uh, not only does it help students have access to the task itself but it really helps teachers to focus on what are we after and right what are we trying to do right right yeah and learn a lot a little bit about when students look at um, look at a context or look at a task what are their natural entry points absolutely yeah and sometimes of course um, 
what we phrase as a question is not a really a very good statistical question. So that gets us, um, when I'm working with the teachers themselves, all right, this is what we're curious about, but could we make it um, oh, a statistical, a statistical question, question yeah. um, one that we can actually investigate. Yeah, and, um, yeah. No, and that's really important. And, and I think it's oftentimes I um, we can think about the asking the good statistical question that drives our investigation, but then oftentimes the method that we're going to go about as far as investigating it might include, for example, a survey. Absolutely. Well, there then you have to phrase questions mm -hmm. to measure things in your survey, and it's easy to get confused about the two different kinds of questions. Absolutely. That there's these measurement questions, mm -hmm. <laughs> and then there's the asking the question that drives your investigation Absolutely. that you're continually going back to. I, and I, um, again, that, that part for a mathematics teacher is, um, I think um, certainly not one that is uh, beyond them, but it's just not been something that's been important to their task. Yes, yeah. to to the task of teaching high school mathematics, right. typically. Right, right. So, you know, they have to to fit all of this into a very already packed mm -hmm. curriculum. How do you advise that they do that? Mm -hmm. uh, with anything that we think is important. If we go ahead and put it on our calendars mm -hmm. and then plan around it yeah. and stick to it, then it might happen. Um, typically, in, in the, with the teachers I work with, the statistics units are already on the curriculum map at the end of the course. I, I, I would, I, the lots of the states that I mm -hmm. have looked at, I think that that tends to Do be, that. it yes. tends to be true. <laughs> not always, there, there's well, a tendency. And, and, and I'm, I'm not sure the thinking in that, right. um, uh, but I, we do have the freedom to rearrange that curriculum map. Yeah. Um, oftentimes you're studying mathematics that's going to support then what you do in the statistics unit. So I can understand putting it off, but um, uh, that's why a pacing guide is very important. But of course, um, uh, all kinds of things come in that, that will infringe on your ability to stick to that pacing guide. Right. But if you go ahead and say, no, these are the dates that we're doing our statistics unit. Mm -hmm. If possible to pull it closer, even if it's not at the beginning of the year, that's fine. Right. But maybe right after Christmas break or, or, or something to that, right. mid, to that extent mid semester. That, that you'll actually get to it mm -hmm. um, and, and then be able to use it well. Um, an, another idea, we see all of the standards that are there. They're actually there in clusters. Mm -hmm. And if we think about teaching standards in clusters, as the intention was when standards were written, at yeah. least for the Common Core, um, uh, that, that thinking about teaching them in clusters helps us keep from this bulleted list and it, it elongates everything. Right. Right. I find for the statistics unit, if I look at them in clusters, I have to think about them and have a deeper in, in understanding way. Of, of, of how to teach this. I had one group of teachers a number of years ago that, uh, not, not a number of years ago, maybe two years ago, that planned their statistics unit around questions. Mm -hmm. um, and, and in doing that, we're finding resources that had already found resources that would help them address those questions and all of the statistics came from within there. Yeah. Um, they did, uh, most of them successfully did that, but that mm -hmm. was a scary prospect for them because it's just a different way of teaching right, right. than they had, were used to. Yeah, yeah. No, I think that's really important. I mean, we want to be able to look at, and, and you know, yes, we want to cluster the things that are in statistics and probability, but there might be opportunities that you're also hitting some of the standards and objectives that are in algebra or in the number Absolutely. and operation at the same time that you're mm -hmm. doing those. And so being able to see, oh, if I, you know, yes, I'm gonna dedicate three or four days to this task and this investigation, but in this, I need to make sure that I hit these different things. I, we study in ninth grade algebra one, we study everything linear yeah. and functions. Why yeah. don't we go and right. do scatter plots right after that and do yeah. the least squares regression line? I, 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 yeah, yeah. It would make sense to do all of that at one right. time. Right, right, yeah, and be able to say, okay, well, when we're talking about a function, it's it's a deterministic kind of model, absolutely. And when we are looking at the scatter plot and the data, well, you know, there's some error. There, there's there's some variability. The variability. There's it some variability some around this yes. line. And even though we're putting a line there, we're not saying that's that's the line. Right. Well, and I think <laughs> it's a that one thing is is very difficult as we talk about it. That that's a line of prediction, right? And then how how well it predicts is another um, yeah. option for you. And so. Uh, 
it, again, ideas that math teachers um, haven't always had to grapple with before right. that make the, the line right. make sense. Yeah, yeah, that the purpose of the lesson isn't just to find the line. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Yeah.